The second half of the Big East season begins tonight in Chicago, and more specifically, Wintrust Arena, the site of the Big East Women's Tournament. Tonight, the 11th ranked DePaul Blue Demons welcome the Creighton Blue Jays. And here's a look at the conference standings as we've made one cycle through the league. DePaul with that three game lead over Butler, Marquette, and St. John's. Creighton hanging around there with that five and four mark. And hi again, everybody, along with Patricia Babcock McGraw. I'm Dave Bernard. Welcome to Win Trust Arena tonight. And these two teams meeting for the second time in this month. Back on January 5th, DePaul went to Omaha. Creighton played them within a three point game. However, the Blue Jays were with Jalen Agnew. Now, she is a Big East Conference Player of the Year candidate, had a big ball game against DePaul. However, she will miss her fourth straight game with a concussion. But Agnew or no Agnew, Creighton is always a tough matchup for DePaul. Well, DePaul is looking to stay undefeated in the Big East, looking for its 11th straight victory. But this could be DePaul's biggest test yet because you mentioned it, the last time DePaul played Creighton at Creighton, a three-point win for the Blue Demons. That's their smallest margin victory in conference play. This Creighton team, though, is such a mystery. All of these injuries, a lot of moving parts in and out of the lineup. And without Jalen Agnew, you have to have some people step up. And boy, for Creighton, Temi Sarda has done just that. Temi Sarda certainly has done just that through all of these injuries. She has been misconsistent for Creighton. Sarda has started all 19 games for the Blue Jays and is averaging 13 points per game. She is one of the team's best three-point shooters and is coming off of three threes last weekend against Butler. Last time Creighton met up with DePaul, Sarda dropped in a team-high 24 points on the Blue Demons. And then for DePaul, points, assists, rebounds, ball control, leadership, pick a category, whatever you need, Kelly Campbell can give it to you. And often she checks every single one of the boxes each game against Georgetown last week. Campbell finished with 14 points, seven rebounds and seven assists. This senior is the glue and the heart and soul of DePaul and she is a legitimate threat to bag a triple double each time she steps on the floor. Crane Blue Jays 13 and 7 on a year, coming up a loss on Sunday to Butler. Here's their starting lineup. We mentioned Temi Sarda, Tatum Rembo. She averages in double figures as well. One of the players that's really stepped up here, it's a freshman, Carly Bachelor. Oh, I like, really like Carly Bachelor's game. She is coming off a double double against Butler. 14 points, 12 rebounds. She has been also very consistent for Creighton this season. On the other side for DePaul is the starting lineup that's taken them to a 19 and 2 record. Lexi held coming off a Big East Player of the Week mention this week. And Lexi held one of four players to average in double figures for DePaul. She had a huge game last weekend against Georgetown. 19 points where she hit five of 10 three-pointers. Starting lineup for DePaul has remained pretty much intact this year. Deja Church, a little bit of an injury on the other side. Creighton, every single game this year, this is their 21st game, they've had at least one player miss a game with injury. Oh, and that is so hard for continuity. DePaul's Doug Bruno has been in that situation many times himself. Really tough to establish yourselves when you are always injured and starting different players and playing different players in your lineup. Second half of the Big Conference season is underway, and that is quickly a backcourt violation. Olivia Elger says, I can't believe I did that. She threw the ball all the way into the backcourt. She had a smile on her face the while she did it. She knew exactly right away. Oops. Elger playing in front of some hometown folks. She's from Peoria. It's a couple hour drive here from Chicago. So an embarrassing moment in the first five seconds. Here's held on the drive. The penetration will come out of there. Rebound the other way. Tatum Rembo missed the last DePaul game with an injury. You see the knee brace on that left knee here at the point. Still standing over the river. She's had it for 15 seconds. 10 on the shot clock. Now the Blue Jays gonna have to hurry. Sarda has to force up a shot. Creighton looking to slow the pace against this quick DePaul team, but not that slow. Can't wait for two seconds to be on the shot clock to get a shot off. Stonewall, the soft little fadeaway from the 6'1 senior. She loves that shot, getting you in the post, getting her position, and then she's got such a good fadeaway move. That footwork is stellar. Rembao averaging 10 and a half points a game, four and a half rebounds, also averages three assists per game. DePaul will run, Campbell up ahead. 
church walks. Our officials tonight, Joe Vasili, Karen Prado, and Brian Brunette. Creighton is gonna have to watch its defensive transition. DePaul had two players out in front of the defense on that break situation. There's Jim Flannery in his 18th season as a head coach at Creighton, a Creighton graduate. In fact, both of our coaches here tonight are alums of the schools they are coaching. About a minute and a half in, Creighton looking for its first points. They'd only taken a couple of shots. Just like that in the half court, DePaul forces a turnover. And this is a team that does not turn the ball over. Speaking of Creighton, only 11 turnovers per game for the Blue Jays. There's Doug Bruno, career record at DePaul of 713 wins. Picked up that 700th win this year in his 34th season. Held will bury the three. And just like that, Jim Flannery will take the timeout. He's played less than two minutes. His team is down five to nothing, and offensively, Creighton is struggling. Dante Stonewall gets the Blue Demons on the board with two Lexia held adds at three, and that's why we sit at a five to nothing game. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you down a lot of things just to compensate for the loss of Jalen Agnew. Rembaugh can't get that runner to go. Stonewall the other way, and Morris is there and finishes it. <laughs> so smooth. Alexi Held and Sonia Morris, the two sophomores we were talking about, they do not play like sophomores. They have a lot of savvy, a lot of fluidity to their games. They play like seniors. And one thing folks that may have been maybe seeing default for the first time here tonight you will see a lot more two-point shot attempts than maybe you've seen in the past because the two players you just mentioned, mentioned Sonia Morris and Lexi Held, they are very much adept at making the tough two-pointers. Well, they're adept at getting their own shots, and, and that's one of the reasons DePaul still averaging about 20 assists per game, but Doug Bruno saying that's a little down from where we usually are. We're usually at 22 assists per game, maybe 23. And one of the reasons is because these sophomores, Sonia Morris, Lexi Held, are so good at generating their own offense. They're so good at getting the basket. And they're economical about it, as Doug Reno says. They, they don't take a lot of dribbles to do it. They don't waste a lot of time. They're real good at finding their own offense. Turnover number five as Parham gives it up. 6'2 freshman from Burnsville, Minnesota. 4.35 to play in a first half, and, or first quarter, in a 13-3 DePaul lead. Bachelor will get the rebound. And that's a shot we've seen go down so often for Sony Morris this season, exactly what we're talking about, generating her own offense, just beating people off the dribble. Sarda can't buy it, one and done for the Blue Jays. Deja Church wants it, now she has it. She wants to work on Chloe Dwarak. Morris versus Dwarak, now it's Sarda guarding Campbell. Held sees the opening again, the little hesitation and score. Lexi Held, her offensive game has absolutely yeah. exploded here in the last 10 games. Just so good at finding those little holes, snaking through a defense, multiple defenders. I mean, she is a difficult guard because not only can she do that and get to the basket with ease, but she can knock down those threes. Carly Batcher, six foot freshman from Topeka, Kansas, coming off of back to back double doubles. That earned her freshman of the week honors. And that has been so necessary with Jalen Agno out with the concussion. Carly Batchelor doing a nice job of putting up some big time numbers for the Blue Jays. Now it's Church that's going to go to the glass. Blue Demons attacking the rim here early tonight to a 17-5 lead. Chloe Dwarek 
Nice pass. Batchelor cannot finish it. Deba Kelja, first shot attempt. Campbell there for the offensive rebound. What's new? That's already her fifth rebound tonight. And I'm telling you, that is a strength for DePaul. They are an undersized team, yet they crash the boards so hard. They lead the conference in offensive rebounds, 15 offensive rebounds per game. Jim Flannery telling us we cannot let DePaul climb all over the offensive boards like that. Elger trying to create space against Campbell, and she will give it up. Dave Bernhardt, Patricia Babcock, McGraw courtside. Third member of our announcing crew is Tyler Aki. And Tyler joins us now. Well, guys, in that first time out that Jim Flannery called, you mentioned all the injuries that this Creighton team has had, but on top of that, they're missing or limited with three of their players that are all their inbounders. And Coach Flannery in that first time out was really stressing and going over and rehashing what the inbounds plays are and how they're going to recalibrate them with a new player inbounding the ball. In fact, Tyler, uh, it was last Saturday that he had to just flat out practice between the Xavier and Butler games, flat out practice that very thing you mentioned, inbounding the ball. And, and sometimes it just comes down to those little things that you don't give much thought to that can make such a huge difference between making a play and not, between taking care of the ball and turning the ball over. Elger can't get it again. Another rebound here. Maya Stovall just in the ball game. She has it now for the Blue Demons. On the long skip to Campbell. Bakel just scrambling with Bachelor possession to DePaul. That's the kind of player that Deepich Kelja has been this season for the Blue Demons. She has started a handful of games, been the sixth woman off the bench, and uh, she has just given DePaul whatever it's needed. The hustle plays, getting down and dirty on the floor. It's a very good three-point shooter. We're the best on this team. She's been very accepting of her role as it has ebbed and flowed throughout the course of this season. Dee Dee Pryor comes in for Creighton, making her first appearance. Shante Stonewall back into the game along with Held. Held coming off the screen. <laughs> and that look at her face of puzzlement. Per perplexed. Yeah, hey, that's the word I was searching for. <laughs> Already had nine turnovers here in the first quarter. Six for Creighton, three for DePaul. Blue Demons at 19 and two. They've won 10 in a row. Perfect nine and zero on the first run through the Big East Conference. Preseason pick, the unanimous preseason pick to win the league. Creighton stuck at five points. Hell will pick up that foul. DePaul ranked 11th in the country this week, highest ranking for the Blue Demons since 2011. That ball will allow Campbell to come back into the ball game. So we've seen. Uh, okay, I'm going to try my vocabulary here. You said Lexi Hill was perplexed on this end, the offensive end. I was would say that grin was a bemused grin. That's a good one. Okay. Are you preparing for the SAT? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I need that. <laughs> Here's Dee Dee Pryor. Good wheels, but it rolls out. Tough shooting first quarter here for the Blue Jays. Prior 5'7 freshman from Urbandale, Iowa. Elger did not get the hop off the rim. Running the floor is Church. Deja Church with the left hand. Bachelor yet another rebound. It's her third in the first quarter. Now the Blue Jays want to run with Sarda. An offensive foul on Temi Sarda. That was an interesting offensive foul charge because that kind of came from behind into the side. Deja Church beat me high in that situation. But if you, if you dip your shoulder and shove your shoulder, it's still an offensive foul. 17 to five, we've been stuck on this score for a while. Not anymore, Shante Stonewall bags the three. Stonewall showing her versatility as a player, getting the job done inside, defense, and then bagging a three, a long three. Her 23rd three-pointer of the year. Belcher guarded closely by Stovall. Oh, that shot clock, really getting deep into the shot clock for Creighton on multiple possessions. 
Eldred doing the best she can to get there. Used every bit of that shot clock. Campbell's going to have to let it fly. She'll give it up, and Stovall will not get it off in time. But a big first quarter for DePaul. Doug Bruno's team holding Creighton to just five points in the first quarter, scoring 20 on their own. They're doing it inside. They are doing it outside. Lexi Hill with seven first half points. Shante Stonewall with seven more. 15 point lead after one. You are watching Blue Jay Basketball on Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room, people, for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. The DePaul men's basketball team's next home game will be this Tuesday, February 4th, when they host Xavier at 8 p.m. right here at Wintrust Arena. You can take the CTA red or green train lines to Cermak Chinatown and see Big East College Basketball, which is one of the most competitive conferences in the country this season. Individual tickets start at just $20. For more information, call 773-325-SLAM or DePaulBlueDemons.com slash tickets today. Dave Bernhardt, Patricia Babcock McGraw, Tyler Aki here with you at Wind Trust Arena. It's going to be what, five weeks uh, until the Big East Tournament shows up right here at this arena. That's a fast season. January was a blink of an eye. Yes. It flew. Tomorrow, February 1st, so hard to believe. I'll tell you what, not hard to believe DePaul here. They are doing such a good job in scoring points in the paint. That's what Creighton's trying to do right here attack the rim, make something happen. When you do that, you are going to experience good things on the offensive end. DePaul, 10 points in the paint so far. They only have two three-pointers, which is low for them for a quarter. But they are doing a great job of taking control of this game by really establishing themselves in the paint, getting high percentage shots. They're shooting almost 50% in this game so far. Yeah, on the other side, Creighton, a two of 15. They have also turned the ball over eight times. It's a team that turns it over 11 per game on the season. Kelly Campbell already with at least two offensive rebounds that I've counted. Just does such a good job of keeping those possessions alive. DePaul has not capitalized, but you got to watch this team on the offensive boards. How does Kelly Campbell have seven rebounds already? We're 30 <laughs> seconds into the second quarter. I told you, she is a threat for a triple-double every single game. Sonia Morris hobbling around on one foot on the defensive side for DePaul. Meanwhile, Sarda with it up top. A lot of dribbling, individual dribbling here for Creighton. Rembau back to Sarda. First good look she's had, and she hits it. Temi Sarda, her 27-3 of the season, averages 13 points per game. 24-point game against the Blue Demons, first time they met. Shante Stonewall, a little swivel for a score. 
Nine points for Stonewall comes in averaging 17.2 on the season. Well, this pressure just comes at you in waves and, and then forces that to happen. I mean, the mental exhaustion, the physical exhaustion of just every possession, having to deal with that kind of pressure. And it's not just once, it's twice, it's three times before you even ha hit half court. And we are still early. Usually uh, we see DePaul wearing teams down by the third, fourth quarter. And here we are just a minute and a half into the second. Nine turnovers for the Blue Jays. Morris fadeaway shot. So some really good jump shooters on this DePaul team. We've seen it from Shante Stonewall on those fadeaway turnaround jumpers. Sony Morris, that was beautiful. Elger gets it away. Stovall, though, runs into her after the release. You just sense such a feeling of hecticness with this Creighton team as they are trying to advance the ball over half court. They are rushed. They are just not in rhythm. They are, are moving fast, and yet then they are searching and searching on the offensive end once they do get it over half court because DePaul's pressure defense extends into the half court set as well. They, they just do not feel like a comfortable team right now. Well, this was a team that struggled handling the ball against Butler in the 73-67 loss on Sunday. But this is a whole different level of pressure that DePaul can put on you. DePaul forces over 22 turnovers a game. That's eighth best in the country. But Creighton, they, they know that they can play with this DePaul team. Just a three-point win for DePaul at Creighton. And then Doug Bruno telling us, we've hit some really big shots down the stretch to win that game. Lexi Hill had a huge second half in that game. She had 23 points overall. Shante Stonewall, big game with 26. And somehow, Warwick came away with it. Ooh, that was nearly a backcourt violation. 24 to 9. Creighton is still searching to get into double digits here. Looking to beat the shot clock, Elger does. Olivia Elger, Illinois product, with her seventh point, her second three. It took about 13 minutes before Creighton could get to that double digit mark. DePaul has it doubled up on the Blue Jays. Five and four in a Big East conference coming into this one. And a hot hand is from Olivia Elger. She knocks down another one. She has been a very consistent three-point shooter for Creighton, and she is certainly feeling it right now. Church gets the contact, gets the bucket. We've already seen here in this ballgame the Varied ways that DePaul can score. Inside, outside, pounding to the glass, mid-range jumpers. I think a characteristic of these DePaul basketball teams over the years is that so many players can shoot threes on this team. But I think this DePaul team, in my opinion, has more players who can get themselves to the rim on their own than, than I've ever seen before. And that makes this team, this offense, particularly dangerous so versatile in the way that they can score the ball. I think we've seen that evolve here as the season has gone on. Elger to Dwarak, back to Elger. Five and a shot clock and a kick. It resets the clock to 20 seconds. Creighton will head to Marquette on Sunday to take on the Golden Eagles. The 2 o'clock start time, central time. DePaul, meanwhile, will host Providence. That will tip off here at Wintrust Arena at 1 o'clock. Chloe Dwarak on the bounce comes out of there for Parham. Stonewall was begging for it inside. She got it, she had the mismatch, and she finishes yeah. it. Exactly, Dave. She is such a smart player. She knew she had a smaller player on her. Give me the basketball, let me go to work. 29-15. 
Elger, the lefty, has her shot partially blocked. Campbell nice. will drive the kick out. Morris the three. And the foul will go. Yet another offensive rebound for the Blue Demons. That is five in this game. Six second chance points. Deba Kelja, her first basket of the night. A 16 point lead for DePaul, the 11th ranked team in the nation. Winners of 10 in a row. Last loss for DePaul came on this floor. It was a 10 point loss to now fifth rank UConn. The other loss for DePaul to Oregon State. First appearance in the game for Kiara Dahlman. Uh, Jim Flannery on the other side brings in some fresh bodies. He only has eight really healthy players here tonight. Carly Batchelor comes back in along with Dee Dee Pryor. Well, they have been injured since the start of the season. They opened the season with only 11 healthy players, and that number has dwindled down to eight. And once this conference season gets started, it is so hard to get healthy. Campbell is able to hit her first basket of the night. It comes from three-point range and stretches the lead to 19 midway through the second quarter. She nearly got a steal there. Just a swarming defense. Dwarick will give it up. Here, Dolman back to Campbell, and this time Bakelja was looking to post up inside. She'll get it out the outside. Nice give and go. How about that? Dolman on the handoff to Bakelja. A 21 point lead. Man, oh, oh, jeez. Just Bekelja everywhere. Three. And here off a missed shot. Look at the full court pressure. Thirty six to fifteen with three forty five to play in the first half. Every pass is challenged. Every dribble is challenged. This DePaul team so quick. The tips deflections that this team gets it wears on you. Media timeout here in the second quarter. The pace has been hectic as far as Creighton is concerned, but just right for DePaul, 36-15. 3.40 to play in the first half. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now.
Wind Trust Arena and DePaul University will host the 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep. Starting Friday, March 6th, enjoy the competition as all 10 of the conference's teams vie for an automatic berth in the 2020 NCAA Women's Championship Tournament. Tickets are on sale now, so call the DePaul ticket office today to reserve your package or visit BigEast.com slash WBB tickets for more information. Tyler Aki listening in on the Creighton Huddle. Tyler, what do you have? Well, Coach Flannery was really upset with the way his team was trying to enter the ball into the post, and when you're missing a player like Jalen Agnew for this Creighton team, that's certainly going to be an impactful loss for you with moving the ball. You mentioned the flow that she brings to this team, something that this Blue Jays squad really missing right now early on. Well, Coach Doug Bruno giving uh, Jalen Agnew the, the highest form of praise when he said, you know, when I look at players across this league, the top players in this league, if I had to vote for a player of the year right now, it would be either her or uh, Maddie Segrist from Villanova. And, uh, you know, he can't vote for one of his own players. Obviously, there are some DePaul players who would be in that mix, but uh, just really regarded by conference coaches in this league as one of the best players in the league, averaging 20 points per game. It is, it is hard to function without a player of that caliber, especially somebody who has grown up in this program and has been so impactful over her entire career. It's the fourth game playing without Jalen Agnew and Blue Jays one and two without her. And in those games, the point average for Creighton has dropped four points and the points allowed has increased a couple. So she has obviously been an impact player on both ends. And it was Agnew last year that really had a tough season with a thumb injury that really limited her and yet he had a great season last year. So this is a, Jim Flannery uh, has seen his star player the last couple of years here and Jalen Agnew banged up either on the floor playing at less than full speed or in this case, sitting on the bench. Saw Deba Kelja for DePaul hit another three, seven points off the bench for Kelja here in the second quarter. And, you know, I imagine just the disappointment, Dave, of uh, having such a good career and then getting to your senior year and having it interrupted with injury like this. Uh, Coach Jim Flannery saying that it's really been tough on Jalen Agnew to, to be out right now. She feels like she's letting her teammates down, and that's why he's it's just been such a dream for him to coach her. She really takes that responsibility as being the, the best player on this team so personally and so seriously. Well, she's suffering from a concussion that she suffered against Seton Hall four games ago but last week she was all set to play last weekend and all of a sudden just didn't feel right in practice leading up to the Friday game against Xavier and she said I'm, I'm not going to do it. I think that says a lot yeah. about her maturity though I mean to have that kind of self-awareness knowing how badly she wanted to get back into practice and back to playing in games to pull herself that says a lot about just w where she is as a, not only a player but a, as a person and that, that kind of maturity to to understand herself like that. Now you just witnessed a rare moment right there. Kelly Campbell with the turnover. That is only her 21st turnover of the year in her 22nd game. Campbell comes in leading the nation in assist to turnover ratio at almost six, 5.9. That is remarkable. I don't know, I was gonna say, you give her turnover numbers, now give her assist numbers. Yep. <laughs> and it really, it's stunning how many more assists than turnovers she has, considering how much she handles the basketball for DePaul. Those total assist numbers to the 21 turnovers. Maya Stovall with that driving score. And that's a sweet move by Stovall and nice for DePaul fans to see because she has been hurt this season as well and she is starting to get back into the mix. Stonewall forces the hill ball. Possession will change to DePaul. So the numbers for Kelly Campbell, we say there's 21 turnovers. Campbell with 119 assists. This time it's all Maya Stovall with the left hand. And she started some games last year for the Blue Demons and then was injured a little bit this year. And she can be an important piece to DePaul with her quickness. You saw how quick she accelerated there to the basket. That's the second straight traveling call on Kiara Dahlman as Doug Bruno searching for the the one big that he will need as this season rolls along. Of course, DePaul plays pretty much with five guards. And Dahlman is one of the tall players, the biggest player in the team at 6'2", that Doug Bruno wants. DePaul plays small ball, but of course, as the season goes on and as you get yourself into the NCAA tournament, you need some size, you need some bigs, you need a presence in the lane. And DePaul has some really good candidates this season. Doug Bruno trying to develop those bigs. 
41-19 with a buck 20 to play here in the first half. Stovall, long range. Another rebound for Kelly Campbell. And another offensive board for the Blue Demons. This time it's Dahlman. Possession will continue. Ten rebounds for Kelly Campbell already in this game. That is remarkable. And another offensive board. Stovall, the bounce to Stonewall. Looking for the whistle, didn't get it. So somehow Creighton survives that onslaught. Kelly Campbell doing a nice job of getting back into defensive transition there, preventing the layup, almost getting one the other way, full court. Well, that was about a 50-foot pass right on the money. Creighton will get a chance to take a breath. <laughs> you see it right there. Yeah. Elger. Doubling over. She has 12 to shoot. Four-second difference on the big clock and the game clock. Elger tries to create her shot. She gets it. A 12-point first half for Olivia Elger. Now Bakelja will not get this one off in time. But another big quarter for DePaul. They scored 20 points in the first, 21 more here in the second. Doug Bruno heads to the locker room with a 20-point lead at the half. You're watching Creighton Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Paul cruising by 20 here at the half from Wintrust Arena. Great to have you with us here on a Friday night. I'm Dave Bernhardt along with Patricia Babcock-McGraw. And Trish, the word that comes to mind is just cruising. DePaul is playing their game and has absolutely cruised with this 20-point lead. I, I think it starts with the defense. You, you saw the defensive effort, just relentless attack pressure mode out of DePaul, forcing a lot of Creighton mistakes. You know, oftentimes uh, we bring up the player of the week, the freshman of the week, and uh, they're from schools all over the conference. Tonight, you get them both. Here's your player of the week, Lexi Hill. And on the other side, the freshman, Carly Batchelor. And check out these numbers for both of these players. So often, these awards are given to players that not only score a lot of points, but they're doing a lot of other things. They're stuffing the stat sheet. Lexi averaging six rebounds a game and three assists per game last week in addition to scoring a lot. And then Carly Bashel, I mean, she's just a freshman. Look at that field goal percentage right there, Dave. Shooting nearly 70% from the field last week. You know, that shows me a lot of maturity in her game, uh, taking good shots. Um, th that is huge for Creighton, especially with so many players, big time players out with injury. Here's a look at the honor roll that was announced this 
past Monday here in the Big East Conference. Uh, we'll get that for you in just a second. There we go. And there's Tammy Sarda as well. So uh, very, very much a game here tonight and a Friday night. You get to see a lot of familiar faces you're looking at right there. Well, Tammy Sarda has been so huge. We mentioned it in the open, has started all 19 games for this Creighton team. She has been misconsistent. She has not missed. She has been somebody that Creighton has been able to really lean on heavily this season. Well, you said January is over. You're right. And as the calendar turns to February, Big East teams across the conference will hold pink games to raise awareness for breast cancer and fund critical research. In fact, the Creighton men's basketball program kicked off the season of pink games in Omaha last weekend. They were holding an event that became an Omaha tradition. It's a sight to behold. It's our 10th year doing the uh, Creighton vs. Cancer Pink Out. When we come together on a cause, uh, Creighton has shown and the city has shown that uh, they'll really rally around it. And uh, each year it's kind of taken on its own form and you know manifested itself into what it is today. And we're lucky to have the event. I think everyone has a, a unique first experience when they either come through the concourse or step out of the tunnel the first time you see it. It's really overwhelming. For me, uh, it's probably our stand up for uh, presentation we do. The arena goes dead silent. and. Uh, I don't think there's anybody that isn't impacted, and that's probably the moment that re resonates with most. Everybody's either is celebrating a life in some respect today, whether it's someone that, that they've lost to this awful disease, someone that's beat it, or someone that's currently going through it, uh, you're honoring someone. In my wildest dreams, I would have never guessed that the community and the media and everybody would have jumped on board with this like they have. When I'm done here someday, it'll be one of the, one of the proudest things I think that we've left behind. You're watching Creighton Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. At halftime at Trust Arena, it's been a special Olympics night here in the South Loop of Chicago. Great to have you with us tonight, along with Patricia Babcock McGraw. Tyler Aki is along as well. I'm Dave Bernhard, and we have seen a clinic. I mean, it really has. Offensively and defensively, Verde Paul, they, have, they look like the 11th ranked team in the country, and an honor they've earned. Absolutely, and that defense is turning into easy offense. DePaul shooting 53% from the field, 20 points in the paint, so they are they're getting those high percentage looks and, and really converting. They, they are putting on a clinic. They, they're just playing so well on both ends of the floor. Defensively for DePaul, of course, we mentioned they 
average, forcing about 22 turnovers per game. They forced 14 in the first half. We'll take a look at all the stats in a bit. But 14 first half turnovers for Creighton in the first half. Not only has Creighton had to worry about their offense, how do you stop the ball inside, outside, yep. and in, into the paint at the rim? So many scores on this team. You've got four double-figure scores plus some threats off the bench. Shante Stonewall just so smooth, hitting that nice jumper, and Sonia Morris as well. Just within the offense, not force anything. Lexi held. She has seven points in this game. We're seeing a lot of shots from deep, but really DePaul making the most noise inside in the paint. Deba Kelger there with a, a putback, and then Shante Stonewall so tough. Once she gets her hands on the basketball in that block area, watch out because she has so many good moves where she can rise up above you and score. Pull the calculator out. Seven of 26 from the field. That's just 27% for Creighton. They've had some balls roll out of there. Olivia Eldridge has 12 points for the Blue Jays. You see Shante Stonewall 11 and 7 and, and Kelly Campbell what more can you say? 10 rebounding 10 rebounds in the first half. That is Campbell's 8th 10 rebound or more game this season. <laughs> That's incredible and she's a guard but everybody on this DePaul team rebounds. I think another telling number is those turnovers 14 by Creighton. They average only 11 turnovers per game. This team usually takes very good care of the basketball, but I, I felt like this entire first half, they were just out of sorts. They were not playing comfortable basketball, and that's a tough position to be in on the road. About four weeks ago, these teams played to a three-point game. DePaul having to break a tie with about 30 seconds left. Well, that tie was broken early. Blue Demons lead it by 20 here at the half. You're watching Creighton Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Trust Arena in Chicago. That's where we are on a Friday night. And it is Big East basketball. It'll be Big East basketball here in about five weeks when the women's tournament returns right here to this arena. Dave Bernhardt, Patricia Babcock, McGraw, and Tyler Aki with you in a 41-21 game. And take a look at those uh, Big East conference standings coming into tonight's game. We've made it through one round of conference play, nine games played out of an 18-game schedule. Of course, DePaul with that big three-game lead at the top but look at that bunch, six teams within a game of each other. Well, you've got a log jam there right in the middle of the conference from second to seventh place. And, and Creighton could do a lot for itself here with a win. You don't want to get 
pushed further down in, in that muck there. And then and meanwhile, DePaul, you see the sparkling 9-0 record. They are looking to continue that, get their 20th win. That's, that's a benchmark right there. They are playing right now for the NCAA tournament and the selection committee. They are playing for seeding. Doug Bruno, very adamant about making that good impression. That's why he schedules such a tough non-conference schedule for that strength of schedule purposes. But them wanting to, you know, do as well as possible in this Big East conference to really make the case. And he was talking to us earlier this week about preparing for an NCAA tournament run and, and mentioning that, hey, you know, we haven't always maximized um, our, our uh, opportunities with getting a high enough seed to, to really, you know, have a home court advantage or to, to, you know, play weaker teams in the earlier rounds. And three of the four Sweet 16s that DePaul has earned they have done so on a foreign court. They, they don't want that to be the case this year. And, and so right now they are really playing for positioning. So every win just as important for them as those teams log jam there in the middle of the Big East standings. DePaul looking to be in good shape for its 18th straight NCAA tournament. Of course, the winner of the Big East Conference tournament gets that automatic bid into that NCAA tournament. A NCAA tournament that could be played here, but what we will know will be played here will be that women's basketball tournament and that's right March 6th now don't be fooled that is just a few weeks away and of course right here at Win Trust and Reading get your tickets at BigEast.com slash WBB tickets and uh, you expect uh, all the teams come back here and back to those standings they come back here but which day do they come back because if you're one of those right now five and four teams that end up in that seventh seed well all of a sudden you have to play in that first round matchup if you can win a couple of games, it doesn't take a whole lot to get up to the number two seed to get a much more advantageous schedule coming into this tournament. Yeah, you don't want to be playing all four days of the Big East tournament. That, that's a big strain. Four straight days of basketball, that, that's a lot. Tyler Aki was able to speak to each of the two head coaches. Let's check in with him right now. Well, guys, with Coach Bruno, he was really happy with the way his team came out, especially on the defensive end of the ball, and says, don't pay attention to the score now. Keep your foot on the gas. Meanwhile, on the other side for Coach Flannery, the team shot well from three, but they didn't have enough opportunities. This is a team that shoots over 20 threes per game, and they only had nine attempts in that first half. A lot of that is because of the turnovers, 14 first half turnovers, which is more than they have in entire games on average. And he said a big part of that is they panicked when DePaul applied a trap on them, and he's going to look to adjust that here in the second half. You know, Trisha, good point right there because you can watch all the film you want on DePaul, but once you get on the floor, and we've seen it here tonight, you've seen a little bit of panic. Yeah, a lot of coaches tell us that they play with extra players on defense to prepare for DePaul's pressure, playing with extra guy players, guy practice players on the floor to simulate DePaul's quickness. Deja Church thought, thought she got clean ball that time, but it will not go her way. Here's Tatum Rembaugh taking the ball to the basket. Third foul on Church, and she will exit 10 seconds into this third quarter. Be replaced by Dee Bakelja. Bakelja with seven points off the bench, all of them coming in the second quarter for the Blue Demons. Rembaugh looking to do more in this game. She was quiet, over four from the field in the first half for no points for Taylor excuse me, Tatum, and, and this Creighton team needs her to be a scorer. In fact, she was just that on Sunday. It was her second game back from injury. She went for a career-high 23 points in the loss to Butler. Morris. Miss Red Kelly Campbell for DePaul. That will be her ninth turnover of this game. Bachelor ahead to Sarda. Elger with the switch. Rembaugh the feed deep. With the left hand, first basket of the night for Gracie Griglione, 6'1 sophomore from Truro, Iowa. I love the high school that Gracie Griglione is from. Interstate 35 high school. <laughs> Stonewall gets her own miss. 
Back in it goes to Shante Stonewall with the glass. With the glass and with some contact too. You saw the concentration there from Shante Stonewall. So good at finishing with contact. Stonewall six of 10 from the field tonight. And another three. Olivia Elger with her fourth three-pointer of the night. She has 15, 15 of her team's 28 points for the senior from Peoria, Illinois. Creighton's knocked five points off of that 20-point DePaul halftime lead. A little bit of grease on that ball for Sonia Morris, leads to the jump ball. And Deja Church comes sprinting off the DePaul bench, and she will replace Morris. Sonia Morris averaging 16.6 points per game. She has just four tonight. She was held at just two points the first time these teams met. Now it's Church posting up on Sarda. Rimbaugh looking for that opening. Here come the Blue Demons. Look at the five white jerseys running the floor. Bakelja looks left, fires, and a bit short. Some short shots by the Blue Demons. Now this is... I guess you can consider it their home floor. DePaul plays six games, regular season games on this floor. Of course, DePaul plays the majority of their home games on campus, McGrath Phillips Arena. Very, two very different type arenas. Held is able to hang on to the ball, pull it in, and now she comes up limping. You mentioned the last time DePaul lost a game was on this floor to UConn, and that was such an interesting game. We saw a, a lot out of the character of these Blue Demons. They were down big time early to UConn and just fought and scratched back into the game and really made it an interesting ball game in the final minutes. Really told us a lot about where this program is and the maturity of these players to be able to you know, stay in that game, especially mentally, to be able to come back against such a strong team like UConn like that. That, that was a really interesting game, very well attended game, and, and a good game for the resume for the Blue Demons. The ball lost it by 10, but they were within six in the last couple of minutes. Kind of a slow start for the Blue Demons here to start this third quarter. Let's see if Creighton can take advantage of this lull. Lob it inside to Parham. Works on Church. Deja Church playing with three fouls. Had to let Parham go, and that opens up the boards for Sarda. Well, Creighton does not necessarily play at this pace. Not with Jalen Agnew, not with Rachel Saunders, not with Peyton Brodsky as part of this lineup, but this is what Jim Flannery knew he had to do tonight. He just absolutely knew, I can't play at DePaul's pace tonight, and they have dictated it on the offensive end. Yeah, and Jim Flannery saying, we, we'd like to play at the same pace at DePaul. We're not afraid to do that, as some teams are. But they just don't have the horses with all of the injuries, the moving parts in and out of the lineup. They have had to kind of slow the pace down. They feel like that's their best way of beating the Blue Demons. There's the freshman, Carly Batchelor, a nice drive to the basket for her, showing some strength, finishing with that contact. I like her aggressiveness. I think that Creighton's doing a much better job of getting to the rim in this third quarter. DePaul will take a timeout. They have been outscored 10 to two here in the opening three plus minutes. Jim Flannery's team is back in it. 6.40 to play in the third and a 12 point difference. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. 
Here we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we, we do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Fans, come watch head coach Doug Bruno and the DePaul women's basketball team play by purchasing the Lincoln Park 2-pack. Select any two remaining McGrath-Phillips games that are convenient to your schedule and take advantage of the two-game women's basketball mini plan for only $16. To learn more, call the DePaul ticket office today to reserve your seats at 773-325-SLAM or visit DePaulBlueDemons.com slash tickets for more information on various ticket opportunities. Speaking of more information, we saw Lexi Hill limped to the bench moments ago. Tyler, you've got some more, huh? The locker room actually momentarily, but it was just a small misstep and she's already back out there looking fully healthy. Very good, thank you, sir. As DePaul will try to break away from what has become a 12 point game. Blue Demons led by as many as 22, had a 12-0 no run in the first half to build that 22 point lead and here is Held out of the timeout, coming up a little bit short. Once again, short on this end of the floor. Well, not worried about the Blue Demons. Uh, very good shooting basketball team. Del Bruno telling them they've got the greenest green light in America. He's not worried when they miss shots. If you're open, shoot the basketball. That is the mentality of the Blue Demons. And Taylor Tatum Rembo hits a three, and all of a sudden we're down to a single digit game. Creighton has outscored DePaul 13 to two here in the first four minutes of the second half to bring it to a 43-34 deficit for the Blue Jays. And you're seeing some energy out of the Blue Jays. They are slapping hands, they're getting excited, they are stealing the basketball right now. They've got some energy and momentum in their favor. This is a big trip down for Creighton. And that extra little half in her step, Elger hits another one. Oh. Well, the bench is up. They are excited. They're, they're feeling it. From 22 down to now trailing by just six. 16 to two run to open up the third quarter for the Blue Jays. And that's an offensive foul on Held. And you're right about that Creighton bench. They are up and they are in it, as well as the five players on the floor for the Blue Jays. I'll say it again, this is another big trip for Creighton. Everyone is when you are fighting a deficit on the road against a team like DePaul, but this Creighton team has not backed down. I think a big reason is because they are challenging DePaul more in the paint in the first half. They really seem to settle for a lot of jumpers. They were searching and searching. DePaul did a nice job of closing down the lane that left very few options for Creighton, but now that they are really breaking DePaul down, they are in attack mode and it is really starting to pay off. Tatum Rimbo at the line. She's three for three there tonight. Six points for the junior from Loveland, Colorado. Cannot finish that one. 43-38. A ball game here at Wintrust. Blue Demons won the first meeting between these two teams, 74-71. Held gets it deep. Steps through, and there's Batchelor with another rebound. That's her sixth of the night. 
This first five plus minutes in the third quarter has been absolutely dominated by the Creighton Blue Jays. And Olivia Elger with the ball right now, a major part of it, 5-3 tonight. She has a couple here in the third quarter. Shot clock is at eight. Elger's going one-on-one, -on -one. step back three. And that will be a foul on Sarda. Tommy Sarda picks up that personal foul and timeout comes with 421 left. Boy, how things have turned around. A 17 to two third quarter takes us to a five point game. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're on it, we got to raise it up. is who we are. When you look to your left, when you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Groups of 15 or more can save at any DePaul women's or men's basketball game. Whether it's a birthday party or a team celebration, the Blue Demons game provides high quality action at a very affordable price. Be sure to take advantage of this great offer and gather your friends and family for a college basketball game at either Wintrust Arena or McGrath Phillips Arena. Be sure to visit DePaulBlueDemons.com slash tickets or call 773-325-SLAM this week to book your outing with the DePaul group ticket representative. The Paul Blue Demon's gone four minutes and 34 seconds without scoring, and in that span, Creighton has ripped off 13 straight points. Okay, but fear not, DePaul fans. One of the biggest reasons, among many, that DePaul is 19 and 2, 9 and 0 in the Big East, 11th in the country, is because this team can flat out score, and they can score in bunches. They can score quickly. They are number one in the Big East in points per game, 86. Number one in three pointers per game. 11, number one in assists. They can get each other the ball, 20 per game. Number one in offensive rebounds. They can get you off the offensive glass. This is a team that can score. They are not gonna be in a drought situation forever. But that being said, Dave, you cannot put a price or a number on your opposition's hustle like that, causing a turnover, determination. And that's what Creighton has right now. They have got the intangibles going for them right now. Sarda will get it back to Elger. Elger, the pull-up, left it short, but there's Parham with the board. Another chance for the Blue Jays. Rembo gets to the paint, and she'll get to the line. What a performance here in the third quarter by Creighton. Trailing by 22 at one point in the first half. Without their star, Jalen Agnew, they have regrouped, and as you said, just playing with that extra bit of confidence here in the third. Rembaugh has missed two free throws in a row. Yeah, I, I just like the way that they, they are really in attack mode. They are not backing down. They are going right at DePaul. 
We've seen a lot out of Sarda and Rembo. And those two players have really had to step up their games with the absence of Jalen Agnew, and we're seeing it here, especially in the second half. Stonewall from the free throw line. Blue Jays the ball down by four, and they will give it up. First turnover in the second half for Creighton. They turned the ball over 14 times in the first half. The ball has now gone over five and a half minutes without scoring. Church with contact. Elger away with it. And DePaul is getting shots. They are just missing shots that they usually make. And as we've been saying, most of them are coming up short, almost like their, their legs are a little weary. Elger was hoping for a call, didn't get it, but the Blue Jays will retain possession with 2.48 to play in the third quarter. An 18 to two advantage for Creighton in this period. Blue Jays 13 and seven on the year, five and four in league play. Offensive foul. Almost like the reverse of that first quarter. DePaul outscoring Creighton 20 to five in the first. Now the tables are turned and DePaul can't find the basket. Eight of Creighton's 13 wins have been come from behind wins when they trailed by at least seven points. They trail by as many as 22 and nothing will go down on that end of this floor. Sarda, the baseline drive unheld. The cutting Sarda with the reverse. And we have a two point game in Chicago. Campbell, the kick out to Hill, Lexi Hill, and that's going to be three free throws as Olivia Elger will be called for the foul. Boy, you really have to hand it to Creighton here. Down 20 at halftime, and just that is not something that happens with teams, especially at DePaul, being able to claw back from that. And it is the, the, the mental fortitude and focus that is taking the Blue Jays here in the third quarter to be able to pull this off. I mean, that is impressive. Hell will get three free throws, misses the first. Into the game for Creighton, making her first appearance, Rachel Saunders. She missed six games with an injury, and Heldman's another one. And then she did not play against Butler. Saunders will get some minutes tonight with a suffering from a knee injury, but she's in there right now. DePaul has gone almost seven minutes without scoring until that free throw right there from Hell. Three point difference, 44 41. Two minutes to play in the third. Bachelor to Saunders. In deep is Parham. Rebound held. Here come the Blue Demons. And we'll go the other way. I'm just trying to do too much there in one possession. Lexi held a nice defensive rebound, but just going a little too fast here in the break. Sonia Morris not able to get to that basketball. But you can tell the Blue Demons are a little antsy here. They're not used to this going this long without scoring. They want to get back in their groove, but they need to take care of the basketball. Exchange of turnovers will leave the ball with DePaul. Campbell sees an opening. And she'll shoot two. By far, the toughest quarter DePaul has had this year from an offensive standpoint. No field goals for DePaul in the last seven minutes and 20 seconds. Only three points this quarter. Shots are there. The Blue Demons missing shots that they usually make, but credit that Creighton defense. The shots are there, but the Creighton defense making it tough for DePaul to connect. Not letting up and challenging every dribble, every pass, every shot. You know, we talk about Kelly Campbell and all her other numbers. 
How about from the free throw line? Campbell, 33 of 34 this year, and the Blue Demons on successive inbound attempts turn the Blue Jays over. Now it will be DePaul looking to build on this five-point lead in the final 95 seconds of the third. And getting a hand on the ball is Rembaugh. The hand back off to Elger, to Rembaugh. Back to Elger. She wanted it all the way. She knocked down oh. another one. Elger on fire from three. That's her sixth in this game. And her third here in the third quarter. 46-44. And a chance for a tie and possibly the lead for the Blue Jays from Creighton. Amazing what some made baskets can do for your confidence, how much harder you play on the defensive end. Creighton putting it all together right here in the third quarter. Rembo. Rebound to Morris. High post Stonewall. Nice pass. Stonewall stays with it in the chance for a three-point play. Kelly Campbell doing what she does and putting that pass on the money to fellow senior Shantae Stonewall. And I like Stonewall. She's knowing that this is a big possession. You want to end the third quarter strong. DePaul needs some momentum here in this quarter and just sticking with that, fighting for that basketball to get her own miss and put it up and in. 16 points for Stonewall. Nearly another turnover in the backcourt. Back to Elger. With 10 here in the third quarter. Elger with the clock at five. Working on Campbell. Saunders with the cut and off the glass to score and one with one second left. Elger doing a great job of, of, of kind of handling the basketball long enough for Saunders to get herself freed up along the baseline. What a third quarter by the Creighton Blue Jays. They took a 41-21 deficit, and they have cut it to three at the end of three. A 25-8 scoring advantage for Creighton in the third. We'll head to the fourth. DePaul on top, 49-46. You are watching Blue Jay Basketball on Big East Digital Network. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do.
Trust Arena will host the 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep beginning on Friday, March 6th. Enjoy the competition as all 10 of the conference's teams buy for an automatic berth in the 2020 NCAA Women's Championship Tournament. Tickets are on sale now, so call the DePaul ticket office today to reserve your package or visit BigEast.com slash WBB tickets for more information. Well, 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 at halftime we had a 20-point difference. We've got an interesting 10 minutes Patricia Babcock McGraw shaping up here. We do, and Creighton did a really nice job on both ends. Defensively, they turned DePaul over, which is not easy to do. Eight turnovers for DePaul in the entire first half. They had seven in the third quarter alone. And just uncharacteristic basketball for the Blue Demons. Didn't take care of the basketball well. Didn't shoot the basketball well. They're going to have to come out here with a completely different look here in the fourth quarter and get back to the way that they were playing in the first half. Creighton wants to keep that momentum going, Dave. Blue Jays playing without a second leading score in a conference. That's Jalen Agnew. Averaging almost 20 points per game, and that layup from the baseline makes it a one point difference. Rachel Saunders has come off the bench to pick up four quick points. And now, Creighton a chance to take the lead. Oh. Mm. Wow, that was just blindside. Shante Stonewall did not see that coming, and that one hurt. From behind, it was Rembo with that foul. Winners of 10 straight. The Paul up by one. Campbell, she'll get the whistle. She'll go to the line. And that's who you want there if you're DePaul. She said. 33 of 34 from the free throw line. Here's Kelly Campbell. Two quick fouls in succession from Rembo. And Kelly Campbell always seems to have that sixth sense of what DePaul needs at any particular moment. And DePaul missing some outside shots in that third quarter to start here. And just that knowing to get to the basket, to draw that contact, to make something happen. Kelly Campbell, that kind of player for DePaul, just so instinctual. 50 to 48. Creighton has never led in this game. Sarda hard to the basket and we're tied in Chicago. Creighton continuing to attack the rim at just such a high rate compared to that first half. They are like a completely different offense. Hell, we'll leave it short. Olivia Elger, 21 points on the night. She'll get it up ahead to Carly Batchelor. The freshman will hand it off to Rachel Saunders. 90 seconds in to the fourth quarter. Batchelor will attack, and it came out of there. Ooh, and Morris goes down hard right on that left hip. And she's holding that hip too. Getting tripped up there, going hard after that defensive rebound. You heard the sound, and that was bone on wood. And these players knowing how important every single rebound is, every single possession. You like the fight out of the players for both of these teams. Sony Morris. Well, she knew it right away too. That that really hurt going down. If you're looking for a player that spends a lot of time on the hardwood, that is Sonia Morris. That is the type of plays, the way she plays, from the opening tip to the final horn. She will come out, Deepa Kelja, to replace her. It has 
gotten to the point where it is physical now. It's a dog bite tied at 50. We saw Shante Stonewall go down earlier on that blindsided screen. These players are in a fight here. Stonewall once again begging for it inside. Creighton looking for its first lead. Rembaugh will attack the basket. That's two straight shots that have rolled out of there for the Blue Jays. We said numerous times, DePaul defeated Creighton 74-71 in Omaha back on January 5th. Took a 3-0 run in the final 30 seconds for DePaul to win that ball game. Well, we're locked in it here again. Right back into the hands of Stonewall. Creighton with the extra pressure. Shotcock is down to eight. Will not go for help. And again, the Blue Jays a chance for the lead. And they will take their time with 7-10 to play in this game. DePaul averaging 86 points per game. They have been held to 50. They've been held to nine points in the second half. No good defense by Diva Kell just started nowhere to go. And a three second call. That's been three straight chances for Creighton to break this time. Aya Stovall will come in replacing Shante Stonewall. Stonewall will leave with 16 points in this game. The only player in double figures for DePaul, Olivia Elger with 21 for Creighton. Church took that step as she headed to the basket. She saw the opening and a feet moved before the ball hit the floor. That's what happens sometimes when you're having a hard time scoring baskets. You see that open lane and you just get a little too anxious. It's been a long time since DePaul has gotten an easy basket. Been a long time since they've had any points. Two and a half minutes. They had a seven minute stretch without a field goal in the third quarter. This whistle came off the ball and that will go against Campbell. Third foul on Campbell. This Creighton team, you mentioned it earlier, Dave, used to fighting back in the games. 13 times this season that they've won games and they've been down seven. Whoa, how about that charge? Four times that they've won games being down double digits. They are used to this kind of fight and scratching back. Let's check in with Tyler Aki on an update on Sonia Morris. So that ball for Sonia Morris, just a hard ball. She's going to be okay, and she'll be out shortly. And there she is right there in the middle of that DePaul bench, looking up at a scoreboard that shows 50 to 50. Mikhailja drives. Bodies on the floor, no whistle, and the ball out of bounds to the Blue Demons with 18 on the shot clock. Definitely get the sense of how scrappy this Blue Jay team can be. They are really pushing to Paul and making every possession down here on the offense and tough for the Blue Demons. Lexi Hill can't buy a basket here in the second half. And once again, Creighton a chance for the lead. We have been stuck on this score for quite a some time. Neither team has scored in over three minutes. Elger to the basket for the lead. Wow, Olivia Elger is having herself a game. Doing a great job of breaking down DePaul's offense right into the or defense, right into the heart of the DePaul defense. Elger now with 23 big points in this game and, and shooting the ball so well, 8 of 15 from the field, really taking some real nice shots, not forcing anything as Creighton has tried to get back into this game and now taking the lead. First lead of the game, it's 3, 53, 50, 540 to play. It was a 16-0 run by Creighton that got them back into this ball game when they trailed at one point by 22. Held looking to take over, looking for contact, and she found it. And that was not easy. That was a real tough shot by Lexi Held. Another 
really strong defensive possession for Creighton. Really making Lexi Held work for this. That shot fake, one of the best shot faking players in all of women's college basketball. Lexi Held really putting that skill to good use on that possession. Three point plays each way. Tied this game at 53. Elger guarded by Campbell. Gonna let another one fly, Olivia Elger. Unconscious wow. tonight. 27 points, four threes, and there is Bakelja. Keep in mind, Olivia Elger doesn't even average double figures for this Creighton team, and she is playing out of her mind, 27 points. And that will go, it goes for Tatum Rembau. And now we trade baskets. Stonewall deep, the feed to Bakelja. Deba Kelch will go to the line, 59% free throw shooter. Well, you mentioned Olivia Elger, 9.2 points per game. She came into this game with 26 threes. She has seven here tonight. And we've come to media timeout in the third quarter. Creighton has turned a 22-point deficit into a three-point lead with 4.41 to play. You're watching Creighton Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're going to work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Steve Paul will be back here at Wintrust Arena this Sunday afternoon when they host Providence at 1 p.m. Join other fans as the Blue Demons seek to remain at the top of the Big East standings and bolster their resume for a remarkable 18th consecutive postseason appearance. Call the DePaul ticket office today to reserve your seats at 773-325-SLAM or visit DePaulBlueDemons.com slash tickets for more information on additional ticket opportunities. Creighton has won 13 games this year. In eight of them, they have come from behind in games they have trailed by seven points or more. Four times the Blue Jays have come back to win after trailing by double digits. DePaul had a 41 to 19 lead late in the first half. Since then, Creighton has outscored the 11th ranked team in the country 39 to 14. Here's Diva Kelja looking to pull DePaul a little bit closer. She's reached double figures. Coming off the bench again tonight, the 5'8 junior from Solon, Ohio. And that gets DePaul within one. But this is a Creighton team that has some experience with tough teams. They had good games against West Virginia, South Dakota, Arizona State, Drake a good team this year. So this is a, this is a seasoned team that has been in some tough situations against really tough competition this season. 
Blue Jays regrouped here in the locker room at halftime. They have been a completely different yeah. looking team than they did in the first half. Like they completely flipped a switch. The ball and the lead with 420 to play at Wintrust Arena. Kemi Sarda, the little pull up and it'll go. Sarda double figures with 11. 57 for DePaul, looking for 60, not this time. Creighton the ball in a three point lead. Big, big possession offensively for Creighton. They'd like to stretch a three point lead. And DePaul looking for a stop with 3.45 to play. Elger looking for room, a 27 point night for the senior. Stovall has her now. Elger drives to the basket. And Olivia Elger will go to the free throw line. She has been so tough to stop here today, really just toying with the defense. Stovall doing the best job she could on her, but Elger has been so good at getting to the rim and drawing that contact. Two of four from the line tonight. One of two, a four point difference. Campbell is able to keep that pivot foot down. Nothing there for Moore, she'll try the three. Battle inside, won by the Blue Jays. Morris tried to get an offensive foul called on Elger, nothing doing. Bachelor though will take it all the way for the score. 63-57, yeah. a six-point difference. Timeout to Paul with 3.04 to play. A smart timeout by Doug Bruno, recognizing that his team is a little unhinged, not only on the offensive side, but defensively as well. And not happy that you're giving up a wide-open layup there to the freshman, Carly Batchelor. She takes advantage of that wide-open lane. DePaul got to figure out a way to get some scoring done. On the other end, they're getting shots, but they are just not hitting it. Credit to the Creighton defense. Olivia Elger with the career high, 28 points. Her previous high came earlier this season. She had 24 against Arizona State. So her biggest games have come against two ranked teams. Crunch time for the Blue Demons with 3.04 left. It'll be interesting to see how DePaul handles this situation. This is not a position that they have been in very often this season, and particularly in the Big East. Held the bounce inside. The arrow belongs to the Blue Demons. 2.52 left. Biggest lead of the night for Creighton. But remember, the team that has pushed DePaul the hardest so far in Big East play. They are 9-0, but it was this Creighton team. DePaul lucky to get out of Creighton with a three-point win earlier this season. Ten on the shot clock. Held, trying to get a whistle. Didn't get it. Stonewall's there. Going to have to get it up. That shot clock is moving, and now the possession will go to Creighton. Olivia Elger, remember right at the beginning of this game, Elger threw the ball into the backcourt, smiled. Just She couldn't believe she did it. Now she's smiling for a different reason. Rachel Saunders in the game. She has it. A lot of time in this game left, though, for Creighton to hold on to a lead. You got to be careful when you do that against a team like DePaul. But a lot of time in this game for DePaul to get its offense going. This is a team that can score quickly. DePaul tonight just four three-pointers made out of 17 attempts. They trail by six. Looking for the three. Stonewall passes it up to Campbell. 
And it's Sarda that flies through the lane for the rebound. We're under two minutes to play. With a buck 47, Rachel Saunders will go to the line. Check that. Blue Demons not in the bonus yet, or Creighton not in the bonus. That's just DePaul's fourth team foul. 22 seconds on the shot clock. 147 to play. Jim Flannery looking to pull off the upset on the road against the nation's 11th ranked team. Now the shot clock's at 10. Elger has it with six. And an offensive foul, and Elger takes the worst of that one. Got hit in the side of the face there and on her ear. That's the fourth foul on Olivia Elger. He crashed right into the shoulder of Stonewall. That is the second hard fall to the floor tonight for Shante Stonewall. A physical game, a meaningful game for these two teams. They've battled hard already this season. More of the same. This game has not disappointed. What, what a stunning change of events here, especially for Creighton. A 42-16 advantage in the second half. DePaul averaging 86 points per game, has 16 points in the second half. Blue Demons 4 of 24 shooting in these final two periods. And for Olivia Elger, she is from nearby Peoria, Illinois. How exciting for her to come back here to the state and she grew up in 28 points for her, a career high. But she has just really put this Creighton team on her shoulders, particularly here in this second half. There she is, Olivia Elger, having, having a night here in Chicago. Paul has gone over three minutes without scoring. This is a must-score trip here for the Blue Demons. Campbell is stopped. Held the long three. Nearly taken away. Touch last by DePaul. The fans here at Wintrust Arena, the home fans, that is. Didn't believe that. 1-11 to play. And DePaul will take this time out. And I think Doug Bruno is asking, would you please look at that and review that last call? These numbers are just stunning, though. Uh, the, the half, the, the half numbers. DePaul shooting 16% from the field, while Creighton in this half has been at 58% from the field. I mean, that, that is just stunning. That That is very uncharacteristic of this DePaul team to shoot so poorly, especially at home. Wow, I just, just wow. I mean, down by 20 at halftime, and Creighton just has a complete turnaround, and you could almost say the same for DePaul. Well, I was just going to say, we were talking at halftime about how DePaul played the complete game in the first we half the on word, the offensive yeah. side and the defensive we side. We used the word clinic. And it's kind of been reversed here it in has. the second half. It has, absolutely. And again, a reminder, Creighton playing without one of the top players in the conference, Jalen Agnew, the senior, 20 points per game average. 21st best in the country. She's missing her fourth game with concussion. The last time these teams played, Agnew had 18 points and 10 rebounds, and somehow the Blue Jays have completely regrouped from that 20-point deficit. And they are in control here with a minute 11 to play. And DePaul will get the ball. So after the review, the Blue Demons have it. And again, a must score. Almost a must three here. Held cannot get it up. They want to feed Lexi Held. And there's a foul underneath. This may go against Mikel Harum. And it is. Clock stops with 105 and Shante Stonewall to the line. Stonewall 78% free throw shooter. She made her only attempt earlier tonight. Go, 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 go. 
63-59, an 18-point night for Stonewall. She'll poke it away from behind, and it'll be out of bounds before the Blue Demons. No, they'll say it deflected off of Creighton. Oh. Man, that is just pure hustle, pure heart by Shantae Stonewall. Obviously playing with a tremendous sense of urgency. She covered a ton of ground because she was on the ball. She was guarding the ball and then came out of nowhere from behind to tip that basketball away to give DePaul an extra possession here. Wow. How about that athletic play right there for Stonewall? As you said, she's <laughs> flying through and all of a sudden yeah. the ball appears and she hurdles it to give possession back to DePaul. Now they're going to review this just to make sure. But that is a senior making a senior play, a senior who does not want to have a blemish on that Big East Conference record. Remember, DePaul 9-0 here fighting to stay unbeaten, coming from behind all the way from under the basket. Shante Stonewall making her presence known defensively. <laughs> Whoa. Can we give credit to our, the camera shot that you have of that? That is yes. spectacular. Boy, and just the athleticism and, and awareness to, to hurdle that ball, not wanting to land on that. That's an ankle injury right there if you land on that basketball. You know, and you looked at that, you know, frame by frame almost. Yeah. But imagine what that athleticism is like when you're going full speed. Yeah. It looked like, you know, Shantae Stonewall, big track star in high school. It looked like she was doing a, a hurdles race yeah. right there. So DePaul will have it with 63 seconds left. Down by four. Stonewall. Step through. Got it. Oh! Shante Stonewall coming to play. I think she is perhaps the best player in the Big East Conference this season, and she is showing it right now. She wants the basketball at this clutch time in the basketball game. She is putting this offense on her shoulders right now. The step through, the up and under. What a great move by Shante Stonewall under pressure. Creighton will have two timeouts remaining. DePaul has one. 63-61, and you'll recall even this half, though Creighton has really cleaned it up on the turnover side, they have had difficulty in the backcourt. This is where they are coming up short because of injuries in terms of people that normally inbound the ball, and this is where DePaul is so tough, defending that inbounds in the backcourt. And, and these last couple baskets just adding fuel to the fire of this DePaul pressure defense. They smell blood. They are like sharks in bloody water. Once you get them going, that gets their defense jacked up even more. And of course, Jim Flannery says, no, we will advance the ball since we're under a minute to play here in the fourth quarter. So he does. He doesn't have to worry about the full court. Rachel Saunders nearly stepped on the sideline inbounding that ball but that pressure extends to the front court as well with the blue demons when they get going boy they really have the momentum on their side defensively and they will pressure you all over the floor 15 seconds in the shot clock the ball with four team fouls elger with it with eight to shoot and now five elger looking for that crack Knocked away, DePaul will have it with 20 seconds left. Two to tie, three for the lead. They'll play on. Campbell back to Stonewall. To Campbell with 10 seconds to play, Doug and Bruno, now Doug yeah. Bruno takes that timeout. It wasn't right. It did not feel right. Nine and a half seconds left, down by two. Well, wouldn't you like to know the conversation in that huddle right there and what Doug Brown was looking for, but what he wasn't seeing. All right, we'll step aside for a moment. We'll back for the 9.5 seconds after this. You are watching Blue Jay Basketball on Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. 
Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Nine and a half seconds left. DePaul needs a two for a tie, a three for the lead. Who's going to get the last touch? Doug Bruno says we've got three or four people that can get that last shot. And I think Creighton has just called another timeout. That will be their final timeout. So both teams will be without a timeout. They still show one timeout on the board left for Creighton, however. Well, normally I turn to my partner and I say, who's going to get the last shot? But as I just said, Doug Bruno admits that it could be any one of anybody that's on the floor. Yeah, I feel like it could be any of the five, quite honestly. They they all have their special skills at creating offense for themselves. I mean, I think you got to give Lexi Held a good consideration here, although that's what Creighton is probably going to be expecting the most. She is the reigning Big East player of the week. She's coming off a 19-point game against Georgetown where she's made five of ten threes in that game. She is a clutch shooter, especially under pressure. But what about Shantae Stonewall and getting the ball inside, maybe going for the tie? I think you got a lot of options. Here we go. Campbell with it. With seven and six. Campbell's going to drive. She has it blocked. Recovered by the Blue Jays. And that'll do it. The Creighton Blue Jays come to Chicago. Trailed by 22 in the first half. Trailed by 20 in the second half. Outscoring DePaul 42 to 20 in the second half to knock off the 11th ranked team in the country and end DePaul's 10 game winning streak. A 63 61 final. Absolutely amazing. Give big time credit to Creighton down 20 at halftime. They came out a completely different team in the second half. I saw so much hustle, aggressiveness, determination. What, what mental strength that this team had on the road against the number 11 team in the country. They gave DePaul a tough time at their place earlier this season, coming to finish the job. This is a huge win for this program, especially with all the adversity that they, that they have faced this season with countless injuries, including their star player, a 20 point per game score, and Jalen Agnew not even available to play in this game. And wow, what a dramatic victory. This could be really a page turner for this program for the rest of this season, could really spark them to bigger and better things the rest of this season. We have more to come from Wintrust Arena. The final score, Creighton 63, DePaul 61. You are watching Blue Jay Basketball on Big East Digital Network. The Big East way. There's your final score, 63-61. Creighton knocks off the 11th ranked team in the country, and Olivia Elger right now is standing by with our Tyler Rocky. All right, Olivia, amazing what 40 minutes can do. You open the game and you throw the ball into the backcourt. You end the game with 28 points. What allowed you to flip that switch? I think that's what's really special about this team is we're not going to give up. We're going to play all 40 minutes, and even if we get down, we're going to keep fighting. And that's really what we talked about is halftime. Like, we don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to keep fighting. You know, it's easy for a team on the road, down 20, to just roll over and quit. But you guys didn't. What was that message at halftime, and how did you guys apply that in the second half? I honestly didn't even realize we were down 20. We just really felt like there was a lot of things that wasn't characteristic of ourselves. So we're like, we're going to get back to who we are, and we're just going to fight and see what can happen. 
So you're the lone Illinois representative on this Creighton team. I saw an Elger jersey actually in the stands back there. You said it's your brother. What did, Was it extra special for you to do this in your home state? Oh, it's always fun coming back here and having family and friends and all that. And DePaul's always a really good team. So hats off to them. They always make you work and play 40 minutes. And it was a really fun game. All right, Olivia, congratulations. Great win for you guys and best of luck down the road. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Back to you, Dave. All right, thank you very much, Tyler. Seven threes from Olivia Elger en route to those 28 points. On the other side, DePaul got a double-double from Chante Stonewall, 20 and 14. Kelly Campbell had 13 rebounds, but a stunner here at Wintrust. I mean, it just goes to show you that there is some parity in this Big East Conference. Creighton flexing its muscles here today. DePaul, first loss of the season in the Big East Conference. They are going to have to regroup, figure out why they couldn't shoot the basketball in that second half. Exciting basketball game, though, and hats off to Creighton. What a great second half comeback. You know, and I say stunner, not necessarily because Creighton defeated DePaul, but they played within three points in the first game. Of course, this was played without Jalen Agnew. But, and, and you've said it all game long. In fact, you just said it here. The mental fortitude of Creighton to stick with it. They could have easily lost this game by 30. I took advantage of DePaul's cold shooting, but it was that mental aspect that got them into it. So depressed with Creighton's determination, especially with all the adversity that they have faced this season with all the injuries. I mean, this is a win that it can really carry them throughout the rest of the season. This is one of those games where you just say, wow, the folks that are wearing those Creighton jerseys and the Olivia Elger jersey, very happy here at Wintrust Arena. Creighton will be back here when the Big East Tournament comes back to Chicago, but the DePaul Blue Demons will fall to 19 and three, nine and one, in the Big East, as we start the second round of Big East play, Creighton goes to 6-4 and four in league play, 14-7 and seven overall, a 42-20 scoring advantage for the Blue Jays in the second half and route to the 63-61 victory for Creighton. For Tyler Aki and for Tr Patricia Babcock-McGraw, I'm Dave Bernhardt. It's been a good one at Wintrust.